Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about perspective. Uh, I actually have not been teaching many 3D things lately, but I somehow find a way to always jam 3D into stuff. And right now I've been doing lots of drawing classes. And one of the things that I started trying to reconcile was physical accuracy in perspective. Here in the 3D realm, we care a lot about the term physically <laughs> accurate. And back in the day, in art, art history, the imitation of nature was considered like the highest ideal you could get. So, you know, in the same way that we had fancy renders and you know, subsurface scattering shaders, back in the day they were trying to do that same thing but with paint and life drawing and perspective. And so you guys might be familiar with some basics of perspective, but kind of when you start off and you first learn perspective, I'm going to slice this one in half. <coughs> you would have this idea of this is your canvas, right? And so this rectangle right here. And you would have within that a horizon. So here's our horizon. And you would have your principal vanishing point. And from there, you can do things like have a road come out. And anything that is uh, parallel to the ground is going to appear parallel to the horizon. So it's going to repeat like that. And so on and so forth. Pretty basic stuff, right? Now, on the other hand, the other thing you have is two point perspective. And two point perspective is anything that's at a 45 degree angle to the viewer, explicitly so. And so usually the beginner way that you do this, and like I tell people just do it the beginner way because um, you know I don't want you messing up, is to have your piece of paper here. So imagine this is your piece of paper. And you would just put your diagonal vanishing points for two point perspective right here, right on the actual paper on your border. And so then you would say, well, from there, to there, to there. And this is how you would start doing perspective. So there's like a square that's at 45 degrees to us. And what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is that it ends up being heavily distorted over here. Um, but there is a way that that becomes physically accurate. So like this square up here, see how down here, it's practically at a 90 degree angle to the horizon right around here. Like this to there. And there is a way that this is physically accurate. Um, another way that you often see this done is instead of putting your uh, perspective points right on the canvas, you end up, let's say I have a horizon. Uh, oftentimes, I tell people to use a shorthand of, if that's our canvas, use one canvas's distance off to either side, and that is where you can get sort of accurate perspective. So, for instance, if this is our canvas or you know, our piece of paper, imagine you have it one canvas over it, and that's where you put your two point perspective point. Now, when I started out um, years ago as a technical illustrator before computers came along, we would take the art sticks to our drawing boards to put Yeah, and like, it, that's, that's one of the reasons beginners don't like it. And one of the reasons I just tell people don't do it. Because, like, what if you're drawing on the bus? You're not going to have a freaking, you know, three foot board that you can attach your one foot paper to. Um, so, another way I do this oftentimes is if I have a sketchbook, I can imagine this is my sketchbook. I'll do a perspective drawing where I assume this page on the over, over here is where I set it, and then I just draw on this page. And the other methods you can use are like, imagine it's like half a canvas's distance. So uh, a lot of times you can start eyeball tracing this. Now, in the world of imitating nature and trying to hit that idea, drawing what you see is another method of doing that. And you can do this with a viewfinder. Uh, which is, I don't know if I can find a picture of it. Let's see. So if you wanted to do this, 
you can oftentimes do something where uh, I'm not saying a lot. So the idea is like if you had like a transparent thing here, you paint directly to the left or right of it an identical painting. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing a picture of it. Oh well. You guys understand the concept though, kind of? Like if I am holding up a white transparency, like a hole in some cardboard, and over here I have something that's the exact same size as that hole, I try and make it fit. Uh, well, how do we figure out the math behind this, and how can we sort of reconcile um, this idea of just putting points right on the canvas? And so I started trying to figure out the exact math of this. And I made a blender scene to figure it out. So imagine you, the viewer, are let's just zoom in here. So here's you, the viewer, from a top view. And you are looking out on the world, right? Now again, anything that's parallel to you is going to appear to eventually vanish at the principal vanishing point, which is that one that was directly in the center. And anything perpendicular to you is going to be parallel to the horizon. So here's our viewer from the top. This line is uh, perpendicular to us. So it's going to be parallel to our horizon. Flat, 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 flat lines. And again, anything that uses a 45 degree angle is going to be using the secondary, uh, the diagonal vanishing point. So this is where the viewer kind of matters in that, you know, if you imagine that 45 degree angle here, or that 45 degree turn of a right angle, and here's your Pochad box or your viewfinder you can actually literally measure the distance from you based on that 45 degree angle and figure out that you have one canvas's worth of distance to you, anything. And we see this in the world of photography too because over here you can have what's called your image sensor. So here's your image sensor, right? And this is just a rectangle with little light diodes that detect light. And it's going to have a specific length. And for my case, that length is 35 millimeters. So you guys have heard the term 35 millimeter film. What it's referring to is not the millimeter on the lens, but it's the millimeters on the image sensor of the, back in the day, the size of the literal film that the light is getting recorded to. Uh, so it's the long axis. It's not like a television where you measure the diagonal. It's specifically the, hor uh, the horizontal size of this image sensor. Now, if we see that from a top view, there's some cool math that we can do. So for instance, so if this is a perfect square, we can actually figure out the math of, God, I hate new Photoshop. If this is 35 millimeters, and this is a perfect square, this is 35 millimeters. And on a square, if you cut the diagonals, you find the exact center here at 17.5. And this is where you have that 45 degree physically accurate thing that we love when we're new to perspective, which is putting our canvas direct, uh, our diagonal vanishing points directly on our edge. So here in Blender, I started trying to map out all this and prove all this. So this is, uh, I want to have my camera selected. This is a camera that I've set up to try and mimic this stuff. It specifically has a sensor size of 35 millimeters. At 17.5, the math checks out. You get to put your diagonal vanishing points directly on your canvas. 
Hooray! And you get this cool sort of wide-angle lens view. It's not perfectly physically accurate because both in your eyeball and on a camera, uh, the physical curvature of the lens to get this effect probably means that you have some lens distortion. But, you know, whatever. We're drawing straight lines here. Yeah, um, when you when you do like photography, a lot of times you'll see this, especially on a wide angle lens, but like the buildings will start curving. So what if you wanted to start having more measurements to represent those different ways of drawing? Well, the next one is what if you have a sensor size and a lens length that is the exact same distance? So when I say lens length, that's where this uh, 17.5 comes in. We're saying that our lens is like right there. When you see the lens millimeter, that refers to the literal distance from the image sensor. And so that's why you start having a sensible range. So what's cool is if you measure this, at 35 millimeters, the math still checks out, and you start having some cool patterns that you can follow up on. So at half a picture plane, um, at 35 millimeters, you have an exact half of a canvas distance over here. So if this also informs like how you might want to shoot uh, photography. Uh, at uh, 1.5 of that, so this next one, you have that sort of viewfinder idea or shorthand idea of your perspective points are directly one canvas's distance. So. If I print screen on this, uh, you can actually measure this and see that here's the length of our image sensor or our, our canvas. So there's the length of our canvas on the diagonal or on the horizontal, which is what we care about. Photoshop, were you? Ah, there's a problem, obviously. So this should end up being exactly one canvas's distance off to the side, right? See that? Hooray! So if you were ever wanting to draw uh, just a random picture, uh, I don't know, here's your picture plan. And you just wanted to make it a little more physically accurate or something that, you know, for your purposes, fills your curiosity. You could say, oh, what's this distance over here? That's where I'll put my perspective point. And you'll know how it's supposed to look uh, compared to reality. So at 70 millimeters, which again is twice 35 millimeters, you end up with 1.5 canvas. And eventually, like I just threw in 300. But what's cool about this is for two point perspective, it all works out mathematically. Now we have a different problem, which is the idea that two point perspective actually gets really inorganic and boring very, very fast. So it's way more fun to try and do something where it's a little more organic when you draw. So you might put one vanishing point here, but you don't want to necessarily just put a vanishing point right on the other side. So maybe you just eyeball it and say like right there. And suddenly you can have something that is not exactly at 45 degrees, but still has something that's a little organic. Uh, 
My poor drawing class. I'm expecting to be creative. And then I just make him do math all day. No. So my question was, that's another way that I often draw perspective drawings, is if I'm just doing it really fast in freehand, I just assume I put a, let's see if I can see this in the webcam. I just assume that, well, let's say I'm storyboarding or something or just trying to get ideas. I'll just put one point there. I'll start off that. And then I kind of just start eyeballing in that. It goes to some nebulous point over here that I'm not going to actually measure out. But it's not as rigid as saying everything is at 45 degrees. And suddenly you're in this realm of things being 60 degrees or something. So I also tried to measure out what's the physically accurate story of each camera length given one perspective point definitely touching the canvas. So this is 45 degrees. It's still that beginner mode of both of them are going to touch the canvas. At 35 degrees, you'll notice that these perspective points are going very, very far off. So at 35, uh, at, uh, at 35, uh, you end up with one and a half canvases specifically off to the side. And the other thing that's interesting is you can figure out the orientation of your camera at this point. So uh, you can assume that for physically accurate purposes, you're rotated at 26 degrees. So if this is straight, this is 45 degrees. You're kind of like here. At this point, this is at 52, so like a 50 millimeter lens-ish. You have four canvases distances off to the side. So if I was eyeballing this, and I'm trying to shoot it, or trying to envision how this would look with a 50 millimeter lens, here's one point. Be like, it's going to be like way over here to render that last one. And that's where these kind of drawings get interesting, is you start having lines that are approaching parallel. So on these ones you'll notice that these are starting to get more and more parallel the further that point gets out. Enough so that you could arguably just eyeball it. Another common uh, measurement of lens is 70 millimeters or 75 millimeters. And at that point you end up with like a lot of canvases off to the distance. So much that I'm actually no longer able to in Blender uh, show it. See I can't scroll any further. So I had to like figure out stuff like that. And at 300, it's going to be insane, right? At 300 millimeters, you can just assume practically that you have one vanishing point on the side and everything is going to be parallel. That's four than six on the numpad. Nope. No? Oh. no, it's mad at me. Have you tried turning numlock on? Or off? No, it's just literally like the camera. Like it won't let you zoom out and have like a teeny pixel of your camera and so if I was doing this in the viewport that would be different yeah no it's always this border size as far as I know so what about Three-point perspective. This is another one that actually really bugged me because I didn't know how to teach this in a physically accurate way. So three-point perspective is actually uh, very fun to draw, but very hard to figure out physical accuracy on. So normally what you do is you say, uh, you start with three points somewhere out there, and you go like that, and you can start having buildings that go off into the distance, stuff like that. But where do you put these three points? How can we make this something that's more mathematical and uh, Euclidean, Aristotelian? So this is how you do like those cool Spider-Man shots of Spider-Man swinging through the buildings. And let's say this is your building. You can now add like a road down here. So there's your sidewalk. 
But the problem is, I just chose these three spots at random, right? I kind of figured out that it would be an equilateral triangle, but it's, it's bugging my artistic sensibilities of making things physically accurate, which some would call the opposite of artistic sensibilities. Uh, so I wanted to map that out. So this is a camera that is explicitly at 45 degrees and 45 degrees. So uh, it's rotated 45 degrees up and then 45 degrees around. In other words, we're staring directly at a point of a cube. And that's oftentimes another way you can think of this is pick a point on a cube and draw out from there. Uh, well, this first number is something that I don't ever see in actual camera lenses, but it's interesting to see it. Uh, oh, yeah, the other thing I'm going to do, because we're now dealing with a vertical direction, I think you can see a lot of these measurements better if your canvas is an exact square. So this was a number that I mapped out that doesn't exist in actual camera lenses, I'm pretty sure. But I wanted to figure out, if this is our equilateral triangle, what's the focal length of your lens to have two of your three points, given a horizontal line, be exactly on your canvas, right? And that's 12.35. And you'll notice that you can actually mark out the distance of negative space here. So how far, if this is our point, and this is our point, what's the distance that we're subtracting from this? So then, all of a sudden, like, what if uh, it's 17.5? And you'll notice something that's really handy now, which is it's exactly the height of our render, which is why I changed it to a square. And it's useful to think of this as like a T shape, kind of, because a lot of times this gets really tricky as an optical illusion. There's so little object down here on the bottom of this triangle versus the amount that's up here that you get fooled and you don't think that this is the exact center. But it ends up being that your point of this cube where it's at the exact center will always, no matter how much you zoom in and out, be at the direct center of your render. So you'll notice that like down here is when it really starts bugging you. There's only a small amount of triangle here and a lot of triangle up here. But this is still the exact center where those three points meet. And that's where it gets tricky. So again, at the point where you have this much, uh, an exact canvas distance of height, you end up with point, point four five, uh, like almost a little under half a canvas's distance off to the side each time. And then at 35 millimeters, you have a entire half canvas each year. So that's what's interesting is this is half a canvas distance and this is actually half a canvas distance too. And it doesn't feel like those are the same distance yeah. because of this optical illusion. And then beyond this you start getting here. So I don't know, sometimes students ask, oh what if I want to do uh, three point perspective? I feel like now what I would tell them is start with a piece of paper that's a square maybe. Um, find the exact center of it and then draw lines out from there infinitely. And then if you ever wanted it to be what was it? If you wanted it to be a 17.5 millimeter lens you could put one point right here and then this is the top of that equilateral triangle. Now this is kind of something I care about for personal inquiry reasons. But the truth of it is that we live in, in the future. You should just zoom around in 3D, find the view you like with the camera you like, and then copy and paste that into Photoshop and then do stuff on top of things. Can you even But this is also something that's kind of important for anything like, I don't know, matte painting or yeah. uh, compositing stuff, where if somebody's handing you a plate that used a physical camera and they tell you the lens and the focal length and how zoomed in it was, this hopefully gives you a starting point where you can draw a more accurate city in the background. Anyways.
That's my talk on perspective. All right. I learned I learned something doing it. All right. Anyone else want to talk about something cool?